Hey guys, it's Gina. I just wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about some tips to get started. I wanted to um, go over some of the oily lingo that you might hear and not understand and also some safety tips that you might not know about if you are a newbie. So since I am an OG, that's what I keep calling myself, um, an oily gangsta, I am seriously familiar with all of the oils and I'm really uh, comfortable with them. And so I use them in a lot of ways that you may or may not feel comfortable now or ever using them. I use them really super extensively and I have for over four years and I have never had any problems with them. So um, I just feel really comfortable with them. And I know that when you're getting started though, it can be a lot to take in. Sometimes those of us who've been doing it for a while throw out words that you're like, what does that even mean? What does carrier oil mean? What is a diffuser necklace? Like all those kinds of things. So I just wanted to go over some of those things as quickly as I can, not to take up too much of your time, but if you're a newbie, you might want to watch this. So um, first of all, I wanted to go over why we talk about using uh, glass water bottles. So citrus oils are um, hot oils for one thing, and another thing is that they, they attack any kind of petrochemicals or any kind of plastics that are in our in our bodies and our blood, they they dissolve them. There's a chemical reaction that takes place, and it's a good thing that happens inside of our bodies. But when it happens to plastic or um, something else synthetic, it will eat it away. So if you put uh, lemon or uh, grapefruit or any citrus oils or some of the other oils into plastic cups or containers, it will actually eat some of that away, and then you'll see it floating on top of the water. And then when you drink it, you'll actually drink those plastics and you don't want those in your body. So always use a glass water bottle. That's why we say that. So how do you do that? Well, I have this huge glass water bottle and it's like Voss. And so I bought it and water came in it and then I just reuse it all the time. And what I do is that I will just drop it directly in there. I'll drop peppermint and grapefruit and akatea, those are some that I commonly put in there and then I just drink it all day. It tastes amazing and every time I refill it, I can still taste the oils in it. And so that's a really good way to stay hydrated too because I can, when I, when I look at this water bottle, I can see how much I've had to, to drink and my goal is that I will drink at least like three of these in a day. And so that's why we use glass water bottles and that's a good way to flavor your water if you don't like water. It's a great way to start liking it because there are all different kinds of essential oils that have great flavors. Um, some of them are pretty strong. Like I wouldn't put more than one drop of peppermint in this. I might because I'm an OG, but you don't need to because that's enough. And if you put more than that and you're not and you're brand new, then you might be like, whoo, that is some strong peppermint. So anyway, that's that. And then, um, okay, so the next thing. Sometimes people talk about dropping oils directly under their tongue, and you're like, oh, what's up with that? Why would I do that? Especially like thieves. Thieves is kind of a hot oil, so that is one that a lot of people like to add to tea. So they might have a, a nice cup of tea. I add it to my water. I add it to um, my ninja. I add it to a glass of wine. I drop it directly under my tongue. I swish it around my teeth. Look. It's really good for your um, teeth and gums health. And I'm okay. I'm not like breathing fire out of my mouth. Yes, my nasal passages are like clearing right now and I can definitely feel the warmth in my mouth, but I'm not hurting. And um, it is spicy though. And I'm, I have a high tolerance for, for spice. So if you don't, then you'll want to add it to a drink and then drink it. And you still might feel a little bit of spice on your lips, but look, I'm okay. Like it's not gonna hurt you just because it's a little bit spicy. If you eat a, something spice, a spicy food, same thing. It's not, it's not gonna hurt you, it's just that it's a little bit spicy in your mouth. And sometimes when people are just getting into oils, if they're having a hard time switching over to thinking of them as nutrition instead of medicine, then if they have any kind of feeling whatsoever, whether it's spicy or whatever, they automatically associate that with a bad thing. <coughs> and it's not, it is just, it's just food. It's, it's, there's cinnamon in here. I mean, it's spicy. There's clove. That's spicy. So just don't worry about that. Um, if you do do something like that with this or maybe oregano or something else and you weren't expecting it, all you need to do, you might think that this is weird. This is an OG. This is sunflower oil on my tongue. 
There's no warmth. So the only thing that will take away the warmth of the oil, whether it's in your mouth or on your skin, you don't, water's not gonna help that. So you're not gonna run to the sink and get some water. Um, even if you get it on your skin and, and, and it's a little bit spicy on your skin or, or it's a little bit warm, don't use water, that's not gonna help. Just put, the, put some carrier oil directly on your skin like that or in your mouth like I showed you, wipe it away and you're good. And so speaking of carrier oils, let's talk about those. So there are all different kinds. Um, sunflower seed oil, there's jojoba oil. This is not the jojoba oil that I use on my face, but I do use it to make roller bottles. I've talked to you a bunch about the brand that I like. There's only one brand that I like for my face, and it's called Levin Rose. Um, any other kind breaks me out. This even breaks me out. Um, might just be my skin, but I do use it. I don't, I'm just talking about my face. I do use it for roller bottles if I'm using it somewhere else on my body. And so then there's, there's grapeseed oil, and there's coconut oil which you can get, you can get it like this or you can get it in liquid. Um, and there's olive oil and there's uh, rosehip oil. Let's see, there's all kinds of different oils that you can use, but a carrier oil basically is just something that will spread the oil out. It will either take the warmth away, which if you're using a warmer oil, then you wanna use that. Lemongrass is one of those oils. Lemongrass is extremely good for your muscle and joint support. Um, so if you need that, elbows, shoulders, knees, hands, um, lemongrass, use it with carrier oil, and it's very good for that. Um, that's what a carrier oil is. Another thing that you need to know is that if you are taking something, there's something that I take pretty regularly. I have it here on the table. I take oregano pretty regularly. Um, you can look up what that's good for. And I take it in a capsule. So when you hear us talking about taking stuff in capsules, you can order these capsules from Amazon or from Young Living or from Abundant Health. There are a lot of different places you can order these capsules. I just get almost everything off of Amazon. And these capsules you can fill you can fill up with oils. So depending on what you're doing with them, I usually put five drops. And sometimes I fill the rest with one of these carrier oils. And sometimes I just um, put it in my mouth and then I will take something like this sunflower butter or peanut butter. And I literally will just like take a spoonful of it and eat it. And then um, you just want there to be some kind of fat or some kind of other carrier oil along with it in your um, stomach whenever it's, it's processing it. So that's the reason why you would add a carrier oil. Because if you're taking something like oregano especially, it's a spicy oil, so some people find that they're burping it up later in the day, or they find that it might um, feel it might feel like it bur gives them a little bit of heartburn. And I don't I don't experience that, but like my son does. And so every time I give him a capsule of oregano, then I make sure that he takes it with a full meal, and that helps. Or I give it to him uh, right before bed, and also with a piece of toast or. Um, some kind of fat really and some kind of grains for him. It depends. I mean, he's 11. So everybody's different So um, something else you might hear us talk about are diffuser necklaces. So there are all kinds of diffuser necklaces This is my um, newest favorite one and I just got it at a little boutique here. It was 12 bucks But it's wooden. These are like organic wooden beads Which you can soak these in oil or you can just drop them You can put some oils and your favorite oils in your hands rub them together, rub them on these beads, and, or also on the fabric on this, so all day long, smell it. These kinds of things are good for um, sending to school with your kids. Uh, they're a little bit older, obviously they don't wanna have something like this on the playground, <clears throat> and it might be a hazard, but if uh, your, ki your child needs something for calming, and they have found some certain oils that are very calming for them, then getting something like this and putting the oils on it, so that they can just, right before a test or when they're getting nervous or whatever, they can just smell it and they can take them back to their to their calm place. Um, this is my son's right here. And I don't know if you can see, it's got a Captain America shield on it. <coughs> and the diffuser is just a little piece of wood. I feel like the light is so crazy in here. It's a little, um, just basically she took um, sticks or branches and she just sawed them off and she has made these necklaces and they're so adorable. My daughter has one that has a uh, fiddle on it or a violin. And so this, they just, you just put the oil directly on the wood, it soaks in and they can smell that throughout the day. 
diffuser bracelets. <coughs> I didn't get this for that reason. James got this for me several years ago, um, and I just have not taken it off. I've only taken it off maybe two or three times in the past, like, five years. But it's a leather, it's just a leather band, and there's, there's a special scripture written on it, and I love it. I just don't take it off. But the other awesome thing about this is that I can put my favorite oils on it, and the smell lasts longer on the leather than it does on my skin. I put them on my skin too, of course, but if you hear diffuser bracelet, that might be what people are talking about, something like this. Um, when you hear people talk about a Ningxia shot, so that's not an alcoholic shot. I mean, I guess you could add alcohol to it if you wanted to, but it's really, it's a health shot. So an ounce or two of this a day is like the most amazing antioxidant. The cool thing about um, this is that it's really good. It's a really good carrier oil for really any of the dietary oils that you needed to add to it. So say I wanted to take copaiba, which I do. Um, so I'm going to put... I'm going to put like five drops of copa in here. Some people might just put like one. I just put one drop of Akatea. So with our kids um, and their ninja, I put one drop of Akatea or one drop of Christmas spirit usually in theirs um, for a lot of different reasons, but they love it. That's why it's called a shot because it's just a shot and that's it. It's really yummy. And um, so if you hear that, that's what we're talking about. If you hear about roller bottles, so some people make their own. I do. A lot of us make our own roller bottles. Young Living provides um, some roller bottles that are pre-made, and so Deep Relief is one of those. It's amazing. It's pre-diluted. There's already a carrier oil in here. You pop it open. Good thing for Deep Relief, a lot of times, you can carry it with you, back of neck, anywhere you're feeling a little bit of tension. Um, something else that it helps me with is to rub it here during certain times that I'm feeling pressure there. Um, also, my daughter has been having a lot of pressure in her ear, and so I have been just rubbing it right behind her ear, and that seems to be really helping her. So these little roller bottles, I mean, there's Deep Relief, there's Stress Away, there's Tranquil, and uh, Breathe Again. I think that's all of them that are pre-made already. They're amazing things to have on hand. And then also you can buy your own roller bottles and make them of your favorite things. And that's great to have on hand. And so one more thing, oh, two more things I wanna talk about really quick. Um, how do we carry these oils with us? I mean, a lot of people, you're like, how do you carry that many oils with you? Like, why, where are these all coming from? You're like Mary Poppins pulling those out of your purse. So um, a lot of us have little cases. Mine's a little bit bigger than some people's because I carry a lot with me all the time just because I'm an OG. So um, I can carry one, two, three, four, five. I can carry 10 in here, and it's the perfect size. I also have my lip balm. Jimmy talked about that in a video uh, yesterday. I can't go, I just cannot let myself run out of Young Living Lip Balm. It's my favorite. So anyways, that's that. Then one other thing. People always ask this question. Why does it say on this or that instruction that um, I can only diffuse for five minutes at a time or whatever? Well, you do, that's not that's not the case for all diffusers. When they say that, they are talking about these kind of diffusers right here. If you can see this nebulizing diffuser, so these kind of diffusers, you hook um, the bottle directly up to the diffuser like this, and then there's a timer on it, and it says 5, 10, 15, 20. You can decide, and then how long you want it, and then you decide how much output you want. A little bit of output. A lot of output if you can hear that and then the other thing that these are really good for um, a friend of mine showed me this whenever her son stayed with me and we just keep it here in case he needs it and then I've also used it with our daughter so um, these I guess you could do it with a diffuser too but there's not as much output you put you can put this directly um, this face mask in case someone you like a nebulizer treatment so you could put this directly over this so just hold it there and then hold it over your face and breathe in for however long you would normally do some kind of um, breathing treatment if you were just needing some extra support. So something that people use a lot with that is frankincense or um, RC, Raven, some of those, but you need to do your research on that. I'm just showing you different things that you might see or you might hear about people talking about using a nebulizer, using all this there, and you're like, how do you do that with oils? Well, that's how you do it. So I think I have covered 
everything. The only other thing I wanted to cover, two more things. Um, if you are diffusing in a small child's room, a baby or a small child's room, um, <clears throat> it's totally fine. Like pretty much everything is fine. I have diffused right next to all of my children forever. But the safest thing for me to advise you to do is to put the diffuser in the middle of the room. So if it's on a dresser or something, especially um, maybe next by an, an infant's crib, don't put it right next to the crib. For one thing, they could they could grab it and spill it and knock it over. Um, or, but the other thing is we don't. When you don't know for sure how uh, someone's going to react, which I've never had anyone have a bad reaction, but but for, for children, you just the, the safest thing for you to do is to keep it in the middle of the room somewhere. We keep them on our nightstand right by us because we want to breathe in as much of that as we can. But um, for our baby, we, we try to keep it set back a little bit from her crib. So we just don't want it right on top of her. And it depends on what you're going to put in it. But um, anyway... There's that, and then the other thing is, sometimes whenever you put oils on your skin in different places, it turns red. So there, it could be a detox reaction, it could be pulling some sort of toxins out of your body, and that's why it's red. It could just be that you have super sensitive skin and it gets red easily. I can just like scratch my face and it's going to be red for five minutes. I mean, but as far as if you put oils on your child or on yourself, first of all, if you put it on yourself, you're going to know. I just put this on myself and I turn red, but it doesn't itch or burn or do anything. It's just red. And and then it'll go away in a little while. And it's not a big deal. You'll you'll notice that. But sometimes people put oils on their children and then like on their back or whatever. And their back turns bright red and they're like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I gotta get it off, I gotta get it off, I gotta get it off. And then they freak out and they get it off and they take all the oils and and you know what? Um if the child is in pain or if it's burning or itching or they're, they're obviously in pain, yes, do that. But if it's just red, a little bit red, that doesn't mean that, that there's anything wrong, that there's anything going wrong with it. They, they might just be getting some toxins out of their body. So don't jump to like the furthest conclusion if that happens. Don't worry about that. But if you ever feel like there's anything that you have put on yourself or on your child and you don't and you want it off, the way to do that is to get grab any kind of carrier oil, even olive oil out of the kitchen. Just take it, um, pour it on the area or whatever, and just wipe it away. That's the quickest way to do it. You know, the other day, my husband accidentally grabbed, um, he was going to put Shutron on his forehead, and he likes to put it right here. A lot of people put things right here on their third eye. And um, he accidentally grabbed the oregano, and he put it on his forehead. And he immediately could tell it tingled a little bit. It's not going to burn him. There's not going to be a hole in his skin or anything. But he was like, wait a minute, that doesn't feel right. And he smelled it, of course, because oregano is so strong. So then I just gave him some of my jojoba oil, and he literally put it on there, wiped it away. Totally fine. Not a big deal. So just know that that's what, that's what you need to do. And just remember the thing about don't, don't put a whole bunch of oregano in your mouth and then think that you're going to be able to drink some water and make it better. Put some olive oil or something in your mouth and swish it around and then spit it out. So that that kind of stuff's gonna happen every once in a while. Sometimes the bottles look the same. My example here is that like inspiration and oregano look very similar. Inspiration is something that I might put on my face, and um, oregano is not. Although I do use it sometimes in certain on certain spots on my face, but I use it. On the rim, I just take my finger or a Q-tip and I just get a little tiny bit and I put on little tiny dots. I would never put it all over my face because it is a hot oil. So this is a longer video, but I thought that these were important things to say for people who are just getting started. And I hope that I've covered most of the oily lingo that you hear and don't understand. And if you have any questions whatsoever, always feel free to ask us. All right.